Good morning. Welcome back to the Fractured Rooster. As always, my name is Josh. And this morning it's a freezing 13 degrees at 7 o'clock. I've got a trailer on the back of my truck. And uh, I'm headed east out of Kansas to Arkansas to pick up to pick up something we need to take the next step on our shop. Uh, we've got lots of contractor bids coming in for concrete, dirt work, plumbing, electrical. And some of those bids include equipment rental. And I said, I'm not going to be suckered into that. Uh, $5,000 to rent a scissor lift for two months? I think I can buy one cheaper than that. So that's what I'm doing this morning. Uh, I'm on my way over to pick up Cameron, and then we're going to head out uh, on about a four and a half hour drive to Rogers, Arkansas, uh, near Beaver Lake. It's where my folks live, so maybe we'll stop, have some lunch there, say hi to the family. Uh, and then we'll hightail it back here before dark, hopefully, and get this thing unloaded. And hopefully save myself a bunch of money in the long run. Uh, my theory here is uh, I can buy one cheaper than I can rent one, so we'll see how that works out. And uh, we're already stuck behind school buses. This is going to be a long trip, I can feel it. If there's any daylight left tonight when we get back, I'll uh, take you on a walk around the property. Uh, we have had some work done. We technically broke ground. Uh, I've already spent a grip of money getting, uh, getting to where we can actually start building. So. Uh, we've got a pond dug, we've got a, a a lot of dirt work has been done, we've got a pad poured, well, not poured, we have a pad built up so that we can pour some concrete, uh, but we're paused now waiting on some plumbing bids, because that plumbing's got to go under the concrete, so all that's got to go in first, uh, but I'll take you uh, for a walk around and show you kind of where we're at and how much it's cost me thus far. I do plan on documenting most of this build, uh, hopefully we'll help somebody in the future. I know these barn dominiums have become pretty popular. Uh, they suckered me in with a low, uh, you know, cost per square foot to build. Uh, but kind of as we moved along through the process, I realized that uh, they're really not as cheap as one would think. Uh, I think in part due to the popularity, they've become so popular lately that they, well, and because of COVID pricing on steel and lumber, um, the price is kind of comparable to just a traditional stick built home so uh, I think our bid so far our bids are coming in at around 185 a square foot for a turnkey finished house and more along the lines of like 120 for a shell out uh, it's just four walls and a roof and a slab of concrete and then you come in later and hire subs and uh, kind of general contract the whole build yourself uh, in the hopes that you can save some money or maybe build in phases, which is kind of what's going to be beneficial for us. So we're going to follow that route uh, in the hopes that steel and lumber prices continue to come down a little bit. Due to that, we're going to build in phases. It might take me, a, a, it's probably going to take me a lot longer to, to build the thing than I planned. But in the long run, I think we'll end up borrowing a lot less money and we'll put a lot more of my own work into the building, thus saving us tons and tons at the end. So. Uh, yeah, stay tuned for, you know, stay tuned at the end of the video uh, to see how the shop house builds coming along. But uh, looks like we're almost to Cameron's house, so uh, I guess I'll see you when we're back on the road. <coughs> All right, four hours of driving and we've made it to Rogers, Arkansas at Sunbelt, Sunbelt Rentals. Apparently this thing was a rental machine uh, sold on Iron Planet, so it's got low hours. It may or may not. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it says it's got low hours, but I have a feeling somebody might have replaced the, the gauge on it. Yeah, the hour the meter. meter. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, I'm going to run inside and make contact, and uh, we'll get this thing loaded up and be right back. Well, hello. It's, uh, it's the next day. As you can see, the sun's out. It got too dark for us last night to continue recording, so once we loaded that up, we grabbed some food, headed home. It was a four and a half hour drive. By the time we got home, the sun was down. I didn't think we'd get any valuable uh, content out of that. So we waited till the next morning. Uh, hello. you welcome to the now. Uh, I had a package delivered yesterday while I was out of town. The old HP tuner showed up. I'm downloading a driver for that. We'll get that all set up, and I'm gonna go ahead and just disable the DOD on that pickup. It's a 2014 GMC Sierra 5.3. And uh, I know they have the lifter problems. We all know that DOD is an issue on those trucks. So I'm gonna go ahead and preempt that and delete that out of the tune. I'm not gonna remove the lifters. Well, hopefully never, but 
fingers crossed that those preventing those from enabling or disabling the cylinders uh, will keep that engine alive because I'm currently in the midst of doing a DOD delete on another truck. Actually, my truck's been loaned out to him for a couple weeks. So, uh, but I'm going to quickly delete the DOD on that GMC hook that trailer back up and uh, we'll head out to the property where we're building the shop and I'll show you why I needed that scissor lift to begin with. All right, now we're in the truck. I've got the dongle plug in the background. You can probably see that. Uh, I loaded up the VCM editor, plugged it all in. We're going to read the tune from the truck. All right, well, that took uh, about a minute and a half per module. There were three modules. Went right to the HP Tuner's website. It says here, the procedure is to go to engine and then fuel. Engine. Fuel, lean fuel savings. Right there, you see DOD is enabled. We want to disable that. This is the master enable disable for displacement on demand. This is my first time using HP tuners. I've watched it many, many times, but I, uh, I got tired of asking buddies to come over and bring their stuff. So I just decided to buy my own. So we are going to write the calibration Okay, five minutes on the ECU. I'm gonna turn the screen down to save some battery. And uh, I'll bring you back when, uh, when it's done. We'll go for a drive. In fact, we'll hook up the trailer and we'll head out to the property like I, uh, like I mentioned. Okay, we're done. That took about five minutes per module uh, times three. So 15 minutes. Therefore, I ran inside, grabbed my jump pack. Uh, plugged it on to make sure the truck had a good 14 volt power supply the entire time. Uh, I guess we close this out. Give her a key cycle. <clears throat> Fire that up. Fire it up. <clears throat> cool. No immediate check engine lights. Which means I think we can shut all this down. Unhook everything. And uh, head out to unload this uh, scissor lift. All right, well, it drives normal. Not having any uh, drivability issues right now. The old backup camera sure makes this easy. Boom. Oh man, we've arrived at our destination. Look at that, what a change. We had to put a gate up because we had, uh, well, we had some thieves in the area. They didn't get to me, but they got to some of the neighbors. So we threw a, just a quick gate up. I didn't want it to look terrible, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money right now. Uh, because I needed to spend it all on this. You can see we got some topsoil carved out. We brought in some, I think it's one by three they called it. Uh, so one by three rock, which would be a good base for some crushed asphalt to go down eventually. Uh, we had a 110 by 70 foot pad uh, built here. They needed, to, they needed some dirt to uh, help build it up. So as a benefit, we got a pond. It's probably just just under a half acre. It's probably more like a four tenths of an acre pond going here. We got lots of dirt. We still have to distribute around the pond and around the house. And we might end up building some berms or something. But uh, yeah, it's looking really good. About a half acre pond. I've been doing a lot of the finish work. My little skid steer here. She's almost an antique, but she's still. She's still putting in the work. I can relate. I feel you, John Deere. So on this 110 by 70 pad, we're gonna end up building a, a pair of like 40 by 60s uh, in a, like a T orientation. We're doing the typical barn dominium, shouse, whatever you wanna call it, uh, metal siding. It is gonna be wood stick frame built on 
on a slab. We're not going to stick posts in the ground and then pour a slab in between them. Uh, so it's not technically a pole barn. So the county frowns upon those. They've had a couple houses built that way and then they ran into lots of problems. So now the county said no more. Uh, which has really driven the price up on the barn dominiums. They're really not cheap anymore. A lot of the price apparently was in the, the foundation and the slab itself. And when you've got to build that like a, well, like a real house, uh, it kind of doesn't really make much sense to build a barn dominium anymore. So we're kind of in between a couple of floor plans and uh, we're just kind of crunching some numbers to see, like I said, if it's even really feasible or economical to build a barn dominium anymore. That's why I haven't really been making a lot of videos. I've been super busy with cleaning up this property, making decisions on the house, and well, buying equipment like this. So, yeah, it takes up a lot of your time. There's a reason those general contractors make a lot of money, because uh, they make all the decisions so you don't have to. All those decisions take up a lot of your time. <clears throat> so the plan here is just to uh, throw the scissor lift inside my shipping container. See, we're gonna need a key. The back there, we're gonna need a controller. The guy, the guy was starting to pull the controller off this thing after he picked it up, and I said, hey, hey, wait, what's that? What are you doing with that? He said, that doesn't go with it. I said, the hell it doesn't. The ad didn't say anything about it. no controller. He went and talked to his boss and came back, and he said, yeah, you can have it. I don't know what these things cost, but they can't be cheap. Not a whole lot to it, but there's probably five, six hundred dollars there. So this guy just sits, normally sits up on top, but I think we'll just walk, walk this thing in. So we'll hook it up down here. Naturally, it's full of mud and gunk. We'll have to clean that out. Put some dielectric grease on it. Lose well, all your controls, forwards, back, and then just steer it. There's buttons on top. Okay, we got power, it says it's fully charged. Will it move? Yes, it will. All right, we got forward, backward, check, check the horn. <laughs> Hell yeah, we're in business. All right, what the hell? That was a great afternoon, actually a great day and a half. Uh, I got to hang out with Cameron yesterday. We spent a day yakking and BSing on the way to Arkansas and back. Uh, my folks live down in the Beaver Lake area, so I got to stop, have lunch with them, BS with them a little bit too. And uh, yeah, we DOD deleted the truck. We got ahead of it before any lifter failures, so hopefully that buys us some time. I know that's not the real fix, but it, it prevents those lifters from from collapsing and uh, should preempt any any issues we might have. So here we are at the pad. This uh, these are screenings, and man, they are they're hard. Like they're like concrete. When you get them wet and compact them, it turns into like concrete. We're gonna pour a five inch slab on this. <clears throat> I'm standing in the house side now. The shop side is gonna go over here with doors opening that way. Our garage will be on this side and the shop on that side in L configuration. I think we'll have a couple doors that point out that way so we can side load some cars. Maybe one in the back to side load a car or two. I'm not surely sure. Um, but yeah, we're still working on final plans on the house. When we get those all settled, I'll share those with you. Uh, here's a picture of what I think we're going for. Uh, again, kind of a kind of a pretty simple barn dominium, just a pair of 40 by 60s. And then the bonus pond over here, we needed that dirt to put around the edge of the house. He said, I can have that trucked in, 
to the tune of like seven or eight thousand dollars or i can dig you a pond over here for about the same money and you can just use the dirt you got and i said i'll take a pond hell yeah even if it costs me a thousand or two more i'll take that pond got a place to go swimming do a little fishing count me in so here's the house build i know a couple people in the comments have asked uh how's it coming how's the new shop doing uh you know wishing me wishing me the best of luck and i appreciate that it means a lot guys uh it's it's a slow process i'm still working full time and trying to do youtube a little bit on the side and i'm getting bogged down with other stuff kids sports and holidays birthdays that type of stuff uh so i'm doing the best i can i know these videos are a little slow coming currently the prius uh video uh, i've got a part two almost ready to go but we ran into some i don't want to call them problems but uh, we ran into something that turned out to be a very good something and the car is currently at the dealership so more to come on that so hopefully we can get that prius sold and out of here that's going to help buy some concrete or some asphalt milling something we're doing this in phases trying to keep myself out of debt as much as possible so i'm buying things like this scissor lift and that skid steer to help kind of move myself along uh, at a slower pace and allows me to do some of my own work and save save a lot of money in the long run so that's it i'm gonna go throw the side by side in and i'm gonna get back to the house where it's nice and warm thank you guys for watching as always um, stay tuned for the house build um, after the prius i don't want to spoil it but i have so many projects lined up uh the mustang we're going to add a turbo to the fox body i've got the 33 ford in the garage um did the efi conversion on we're going to do just a lot of not necessarily maintenance but small upgrades you know valve covers some appearance stuff fix some oil leaks uh get that out on the road again uh i'm just kind of waiting on some warmer weather we still got the healy in the trailer what else do we have going on uh oh there's a 67 chevelle coming to the channel um it's getting a massive big block um it's over 100 cubes bigger than any stock big block that was ever put, that chevy ever put in those cars uh, i'll leave it at that uh that engine's currently at the machine shop like it's already rolling i'm not like ah, we might do this stuff no i'm already well invested in lots of these projects uh what else do i have oh i don't know if you guys have ever noticed the 61 falcon i've got at the house i built it for my fiance soon to be wife spoiler there we're getting married it's another reason why i'm a little distracted right now uh but i'm also planning a wedding but i started about three years ago building her 61 ford falcon uh she saw aaron kaufman on uh gas monkey build his uh pikes peak car she fell in love with it she said that's, that's the coolest car I'd, I'd love to have one so i found one brought it home uh, it's been on a rotisserie it's had all the panels already mudded high builded blocked like it's ready for paint uh we stuffed an ls1 in it just to see how it would fit and it fits so well i think it might live there full time uh geez what else do i have oh right behind me there's the bronco uh that has new quarter panels and fenders floor pans all kinds of stuff hung on it that's got to go to body also and uh my body guys have become so unreliable i'm gonna learn to paint i think because uh i don't i don't like to pay people to do something that i can do myself uh, that gets me into a lot of trouble usually i end up spending a lot more in the long run and i end up with a little bit superior of a product but i just i hate working on somebody else's timelines i hate owing people favors i hate just paying somebody to do something i can do myself so we're gonna paint that we're probably gonna paint the falcon in any other car we find along the way um yeah we have tons of projects tons and tons of projects outside of the house build outside of anything we're doing here on the property so uh stay tuned please keep watching like subscribe subscribe do all that stuff but most importantly get off the couch and go out and work on something find something get on facebook marketplace hop on the old craigslist make a sketchy deal meet some stranger at a gas station at midnight bring a buddy in another car with a with a, with a gat in his pocket uh to watch your six but go out find find a cheap project and start doing something because uh let's do the way you're gonna learn i will see you guys on the next video and remember go out there and go out there and do something go out there and fix something get off the couch go do something nothing's going to get done with you sitting there watching youtube go now go